The world is a culmination of conflicts. Human civilization has progressed to aid its survival, stability and assumed superiority through rigid institutional designs that function by our processes and not autonomously. Individually, each human, even when acting in self-interest, is susceptible to the influence of the unknown, the imagined and the unaware. In simple words, the life of every human is in conflict with institutions that humans have created collectively. Collective consensus renders these institutions with authority and makes them an instrument of assault on individuality. Iranian filmmaker Asghar Farhadi's body of work exposes such assault of institutions on individuality. His movies precisely observe how an individual's behavior and relationship with society are shaped by the laws, institutions, ethics and customs. In A Hero, Farhadi explores the tensions between modern social institutions and an individual through constantly multiplying points of view. This offers his viewers ample space to evaluate the complexities rather than follow the filmmaker's judgment. So I, my aim when I'm writing a story, when I'm telling a story, is to have a level of crisis, of conflict in all the scenes that I depict in such way that any detail can become a sign. Um, that's fascinating. And it's a shame. Institutions are a source of violence. Humans are both the receiver and the medium through which the same violence is inflicted upon the audience. Farhadi is a calculative filmmaker. His films are virtual configurations of weaponized spontaneity. Characters in his films personify the same. We feel angry watching his narratives. But we don't know where to channel that anger. Take a filmmaker like Mikhail Haneke, who operates in a quasi-analogous manner, but provides us with an avenue to vent our anger, either in the form of ambiguous character-centric morality or by personifying evil. While in Haneke's films, the agency of humans deteriorates gradually Farhadi begins from a point where humans have no agency at all. The control they seem to be exercising initially later proves to be illusionary. Therefore, Farhadi's works are full of paradoxes, stark ironies and ambiguities. Even the off-screen conflict surrounding a hero somewhat mirrors the ones in Farhadi's narratives. When we first see the soft-spoken Rahim, he is emerging from a debtor's prison on a couple of days' leave. He owes his ex-father-in-law a large sum of money a beloved son and a secret yet supportive girlfriend promises Rahim a better life outside. Hence, he wants to negotiate with his creditor and not go back to prison. Then there is the matter of 17 gold coins allegedly found by Rahim in an unmarked purse at a bus stop. This could be his ticket out of the prison, but conscience gets the best of him. He initiates the process to return the gold and returns back 
to prison. Naturally, the mass media loves Good Samaritan stories. Rahim's good deed is lapped up eagerly and uncritically until some of the details in his story don't quite add up. The saint-like hero is soon dismissed as a con man. <laughs> The nuances and complexities of Rahim's situation and his own dilemmas aren't acknowledged in the process. Farhadi even challenges our own preconceived notions about the narrative or characters at different points. He shows how every individual and institutions operate within the confines of their truth. Of course, the color of their truth differs from that of someone else's. Moreover, this triggers the one with authority to assume a role validating one truth at the cost of another because, for some reason, it is believed that truth cannot exist in two different colors. But Farhadi proves to be brilliant in assigning each of his characters an authority over their individual truth, dependent on personal history or story. That's why we cannot blame particular agents. For instance, the grumpy ex-father-in-law finds his notion of Rahim to be true, which we do understand after a point. On the other hand, institutions that are supposed to rehabilitate and help individuals settle for the easier than considering the thornier. The penal institution and the charity that reaped positive PR from Rahim's heroic status scrambles to safeguard its reputation. At least we can understand the many problems faced by the charitable organization in a repressive nation. But the prison system solely perceives Rahim as a tool of propaganda. The society's approval of his fine citizenry is a commodity it sells. Furthermore, social media manipulation makes things murkier. It's paradoxical how institutions like everyone else, use social media not to openly communicate but to shield itself, then conceal and deviate. Rahim's dignity is also assaulted at one key moment when he is questioned by the jail authorities, the same people who put him up for a show. Rahim angrily slams the door on his way back, upon which he is met with hostility. He is instantly shown that he is not dealing with individuals, but an entity whose predominant goal is self-preservation and to exercise its assumed superiority. Even in a small sequence such as this, Prahadi questions how an individual's right to dignity has also been turned into a commodity which some can't afford. In fact, moments like this bring to mind the humanist cinema of Abbas Kirastami, particularly his masterpiece, Close Up. A hero, in a way, is Prahadi's Close Up. Both the films critique the intrinsic cruelty of social institutions quite effectively, albeit in different ways. Close-ups Hossein Sabzian had lived without dignity for so long. In a moment of spontaneity, he reacted to an opportunity of deceit in order to claim a morsel of dignity. Kirastami while documenting Sabzian's story, questions the social design that has exteriorized the dignity of people. Material possessions and institutions' seal of approval determines the level of dignity that's to be assigned 
to an individual. As a common man, I found myself shivering with fear at the end of a hero. How am I supposed to feel if I am told that no matter what I do, the majority of control is exercised not by me but by a collective of all other agents acting upon me? The freedom and dignity is denied to Rahim because our institutions and ourselves are unable to perceive the different dimensions and aspects of a situation. It's a sad truth that only cinema can reflect what we fail to perceive.